with lots to do and see the forest where you are. We'll cook up some fun, adventure, fantasy, some history and mystery, the magic. It's easy. I love to go there. Come and go there now. Wow! Gumbo Island. Gumbo Island. Gumbo Island. Hi, I'm Bert Henderson. I'm just looking at a picture I made in class. Yeah. Never really drawn ducks before. Wasn't quite sure how it would look. What do you think? Our Gumbo Island adventure today is going to be about trying something new. You see, there were two world-famous artists whose special view began here in Louisiana. Ready to travel? Let's check our locations on the map. It might be hard to see, but that word says Macadish. One more. Oh, it looks like we're going to New Orleans. Now when I say one, two, three, you say Gumbo Island. One, two, three, Gumbo Island. Hi, I'm Michael Crespo. I direct the LSU School of Art, and this is a very interesting house. Really? Yeah, over a hundred years ago, when a family lived here, they invited a cousin from Paris, France, who came here and actually painted in this house, and painted some of the world's greatest masterpieces. Wow. His name was Edgar Degas. The family's name was Mousson. In fact, Edgar's brother, René, was married to Estelle Mousson. They lived here too, along with about six kids, eight cousins. The house was full of people, but Edgar liked people around him. He liked to paint people and the things and the places that, that he was close to. He painted children right on this porch here. He also painted a portrait of Estelle arranging flowers in, in this very house. And those were great works of art? Yes, they were, and they are now. But they were unlike anything anyone had painted back then. I know a place where there's one we can look at nearby. Want to go? This is the New Orleans Museum of Art, and there's a Degas painting in the other room there. But before we go in there, let's take a look at this painting by William Bouguereau. He painted at the same time that Degas painted. What do you think this painting is about? A love painting. That's right. It's Cupid whispering in the ear of a young woman in a landscape. The landscape probably isn't even around Paris. It's out of the artist's imagination. Look at the dress on this woman. It's fantasy. It's like a costume, right? It wouldn't be a dress that a woman would have been wearing in Paris at the time. But there is some realism. Let's look at how this painting was made. The technique is the artist would put a number of colors down and then take a soft brush to brush out all the brush marks. You can hardly see any of them in this painting. Nothing like the way Degas painted. Now this is the Degas painting. It's the lady arranging the flowers. Exactly. It's Estelle Mousson. She was married to Degas' brother, René. And what's different about the brush strokes in this painting? You can still see them. Degas didn't blend the brush strokes together like Bouguereau did. Wherever he touched the canvas, you can see where his brush hit. And what about the dress she's wearing? Remember the costume in the Bouguereau? This is a dress that a woman would have had on in New Orleans at this time. Degas liked to paint things that were around him, ordinary people doing ordinary things. He said so in a letter he wrote back to Paris. It's in this book. Manet more than me would, would have, have seen, seen beautiful, beautiful things, things here. here. But he wouldn't have made anything more of them. In art you love, and you produce only what you're used to. Novelty captivates, and then bores you. It says here New Orleans was a major port recovery from the Civil War. Yellow fever was a problem. Many people were sick. But there were many kinds of markets and people, and the guy found them interesting. Everything attracts me here. Nearly all the women are pretty. I look at everything. Steamboats with two chimneys as tall as factory chimneys. 
and the fruit dealers with their cram to bursting shops. So New Orleans was a busy place filled with people, flowers, and scenes that were new today, God. Even the sunlight in New Orleans was different from the sunlight in Paris. How was it different? Well, Degas thought it was much brighter, and light was very important to Degas in his work. And even though he painted most of the paintings indoors here, the light of the city made its way into them. They got love the people and plants in New Orleans. This city park was here when he was living in New Orleans. So Edgar Degas showed the world that his paintings were art, painting people and places he liked. Yes, and he convinced them with a new and fresh approach. Have you ever tried to paint anything new? Yes, I tried painting ducks. Everyone should try it. And that book I gave you will help you a lot on the second half of this Gumbo Island adventure. Thank you. Look in our adventure journal. You are about to view the work of another famous painter who lived here at Melrose Plantation in Natchitoches. Her name was Clementine Hunter. Unlike Degas, Clementine never studied art. She is known as a folk, primitive or naive artist. These are the artists among us who, for one reason or another, never get to study the techniques and history of art, but who share with trained artists a powerful need to speak to the world with their art. Clementine Hunter was born with the gift to paint. What she learned, she learned by doing, and doing, she did. She painted thousands of paintings, 25 cents to look, we can get in free. Hi, I'm Britt Henderson. I'm Todd Cooper. I live here at Melrose, and you're in a very special room today. This is where Clementine Hunter created all of her creations here on the plantation. This house is kind of small. Originally, when this house was built, it was a sharecropper's cabin here at Melrose. And when Clementine moved in, really nothing was changed. She had very modest living quarters back then. You take a look at her painting palette here. You can see where she mixed all of her paints together, one of her brushes here. And when she finished mixing them, she would paint her paintings like the one you see here. This is an old uh, washboard that she would have used before the old washing machines were available. Up there on top. How old was Miss Hunter when she died? She died New Year's Day, 1988, and she was 101 years old. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. There's a lot more to see. Bye. So this is the African house. Mr. Crespo wrote something about this. Hunter painted this room with the idea of surrounding you with pictures of plantation life. The African house with its unique roof, the plantation house with its servants and families of field hands who worked the fields. Melrose had two crops, pecans and cotton. Clementine helped pick them all in her younger days, and even when she was much older, remembered enjoying the hard work. There are activities outside of work, playing cards, and the rich religious tradition, a big part of life at Melrose.
In all, it took Hunter three months to plan and paint the murals in the African house. The paintings of Clementine Hunter teach us about life on a Louisiana plantation. You can paint about your life too. Draw people, places, and things around you. Just be yourself. Dip your brush in a color and let's speak. See if you can remember these facts about our famous painters. Write them in your Gumbo Island journal. Edgar Degas wasn't always an artist by trade. What was his first career? Degas was an attorney in Paris. Edgar Degas became blind in his later years, but continued to create art. What did he do? Degas made beautiful sculptures using just his sense of touch. Degas left New Orleans for Paris one year after he arrived. Why did he leave so soon? Edgar Degas was homesick. Clementine Hunter became an artist late in life. How old was she when she first picked up her paintbrush? Hunter was in her 50s when she first learned to paint. Though Hunter created thousands of paintings, she painted only one picture of something not moving, a still life. What was it? Clementine painted a vase of her favorite flowers, zinnias. The African house at Melrose Plantation was many things before it became a museum, a jail for unruly slaves, a storeroom, and a hatchery for baby chicks. Folks at Melrose actually brought in two different painting instructors for Hunter, but she sent them away. They gave me a paint, and I couldn't paint like them, and they couldn't paint like me. When Clementine Hunter died at age 101, she was buried near Melrose. The plantation is still bordered by beautiful pecan groves, the quiet Cane River, and lots of grazing cattle. draw a playground with um, a boy on the monkey bars. A TV with, in my family room with pictures and books and, and chairs. I'm drawing a swimming pool. You can do it too. And hey, these adventure journals are fun. Get a book and write what you think is interesting because everything is interesting on Gumbo Island. Bye. I know a place with lots to do and see the forest where you are. We'll cook up some fun adventure fantasy, some history and mystery, the magic. It's easy. I love to go there. Come and go there now. Wow! Gumbo Island. Gumbo Island. Gumbo Want an adventure guide for this show packed with hands-on fun? Parents and teachers, call 1-800-272-8161.